Andreas, the players with the C, not with the K. I didn't wait to share my surname with the Greek version of it. <laughs> so first. So Themistocleus or Themistocleus or even hey you. I don't care about names, identities, about kind of things. So first of all, that big. <laughs> First of all, I would like to thank all of you to be here. And before I start, I would also like to thank and also congratulate Vasilios for this initiative and to state also that people like Vasilios and a few more people here, it's such a great inspiration of young, new, relatively younger researchers. So, in order to be within the proper time framework, I wrote down like a few ideas because as a typical Greek oriented person I like to figure out. Well, I will speak about the Cyprus <laughs> the Cyprus case, which is slightly different than the rest of the cases we heard today and um, also, I'm not a social worker, so my approach is going to be a bit more historical or political or whatever you can uh, call it. So the initiation of the Cyprus pro problem in its contemporary form uh, has its roots in the anti-colonial struggle against the British Empire and the subsequent proclamation of uh, Cyprus in independence in 1960. Upon its creation, the, new, the newborn Republic of Cyprus struggled to find its position amid the, complete, completely, um, the complicated and fragile political realities, both at the domestic and international level. Uh, on the other hand, uh, the new, uh, the new rep Republic had to, has to face also the exacerbation of the cold the, the so-called Cold War confrontation and the rising authoritarianism in both recent Turkey, the so-called motherlands, while at the at the same hand, while at the other hand, it had uh, to deal with a chaotic intrastate political and, eth and ethnic conflicts, uh, legacy of the colonial time. Constructed over. Those elements eventually escalated into an open and full scale conflict, a coup d'etat organized by the Greek Judah and the local nationalist extremist group, Greek Cypriot group of El Capita, which led to the subsequent Turkish invasion in 1974. The short but intense war in 1973 devastated the island, resulting in thousands of refugees in both sides, thousands of migrants, and the violent physical and political separation, political in terms of ethnic separation, separation between Greek Cypriots and Turkish Cypriots, and also the de facto occupation of the 38% of the island by Turkey. So since then, nationalists soon dominated the politics in both, silent, in both uh, sides of the island. Despite the continuous re resolution efforts and reconciliation efforts, Cyprus problem remained unsolved and the two communities live in separation for 42 years now. So that few things as regards the background of the issue. Now, as regards the Greek Cypriot side, the interesting, the interesting about the Greek Cypriot refugees, let's say movement, if we can call it movement, is the fact that unlike other cases in contemporary history, it has never present any signs, any signs of kind of, uh, of radical identity. Namely, the Greek Cypriot refugees, uh, which spread in different cities across the island, or within the controlled areas by the Republic of Cyprus, has, 
had started slowly, slowly to restart them, recreate basically their lives um, in a very short period of time. Uh, this fact, in, com in combination with the extreme socio-political conservatization due to the war, the ongoing internal instability, and also the extreme constructed nationalism by political parties, the church, and other factors, resulted the creation of a strange mentality and behaviorism by the Greek Cypriot refugees and the, society, the Greek Cypriot society more broadly. So in this light, it become very difficult to see any kind of, to be seen any kind of uh, potential radical politicization of the refugees as a whole group, um, either in a sense of short or mid-term goals or aims or even actions. Therefore, instead of a, let's say, bottom-up uh, intrasocietal movement against the occupation and the pot potential uh, reunification in a realistic approach, in the Greek Cypriot community, um, as a centrally planned general policy came about by the government covering the intermediate and very basic financial needs of the Greek Cypriot refugees and indirectly putting or creating, if you prefer, uh, at the same time, a non-realistic, out of any kind of criticism or self-criticism, uh, long-term goal, uh, of a solution, of an ideal solution that never be explained to the people, basically, to the problem, to the Cyprus problem in general. However, there is just a general group of macro level slogans, mainly by political, by the political leadership, including parties, church, and so on, leading to an escalated, uh, let's say, fight financialization uh, and institutionalization of everything, leaving no room for any bottom-up social movement or actions. Namely, the Republic of Cyprus launched a, a centrally planned refugee policy, which based on, based on which uh, all refugees provided a house or some financial support like allowance or benefits. So, based on the personal exp or, or personal experience, both as a refugee myself, but as a researcher as well, this lack of social movements or even actions at the basis of the society by organized uh, refugee groups with serious political aims, or and or even a solid, comprehensive understanding uh, of the situation, lead to um, on the one hand, to uh, the basis of Greek Cypriot society to understand and approach the issue in a very general and institutional way, while on the other hand, it leads also to a deep uh, socio-political conservatization of the vast majority of the people, regardless of ideological backgrounds. So, as regards the Turkish Cypriot side now, <laughs> there is not a clear picture on what happened to the Turkish Cypriot refugees due to the, ver due to the very nature of the issue uh, of the occupied area areas by Turkey and, and its army control over everything. However, there is um, a difference in the relation with the um, Greek Cypriot side. On the other hand, due to the fact that Turkey has immediately changed the demographic character uh, of the population by breaking <coughs> thousands of settlers. And on the other, the violent separation, uh, the violence separation of uh, any potential movement. However, in contrast to that, the <coughs> and based on several researchers um, and analysis, there is kind of anti-settlers dynamic among the Turkish Cypriot society. This is due to the completely different, let's say, mentality 
uh, and background between Turkish settlers and Turkish Cypriots as such. Uh, an example, very interesting example of this, of the relatively, let's say, non-harmonious relationship are the last few elections, the last few years, the elections in the last few years, in which, in the occupied areas, I mean, which based on various polls, Turkish Cypriots and Turkish settlers are voting in a completely different way, in favor of completely different candidates or parties. So nowadays, 42 years basically later, the issue even dramatically change as despite the, re re the reunification efforts, uh, the Cyprus problem continue to, to occur. Both Greek Cypriots and Turkish Cypriot refugees has to a great degree been assimilated with uh, the non-refugee uh, population. However, there is still several and huge issues that continues to occur in in both terms of uh, socio-political and socio-economic levels. So I'm very welcome for any kind of short questions. And thank you so much. I would like to refer about the picture behind me. It's a poster created, a paint basically created by Mihalis Kirilichas, a refugee, a Greek Cypriot refugee, which is Beautifully, I can say, justify what is happening in Cyprus. The causes, <laughs> as some people said before, and the impact. Thank you again. Thank you.